What's up guys, Rich Duper Bash back in the shop with my Traxxas XRT. Finally got this sucker running smooth and right. Just kind of want to give some running feedback. I've had this since November of 22, so it's been almost a year and a half now. Just want to touch on some of the things I really enjoy about this rig, especially compared to the X-Max, the Creighton, my Outcast 8S as well. Like I mentioned in my very first running video, I was super impressed with the handling of this sucker right out of the box. This sucker's got about the same stance as the Creighton 8S, but it's definitely a lot lighter with all the plastic. Without question, I'd say this sucker's got an agility advantage. Definitely not quite as brutally durable as the Armas, but super fast and fun nonetheless. As you guys probably noticed, I've really never taken it easy on this truck. Overall, I have been impressed. I've busted way less bulkheads and chassis with this versus my X-Max. Again, I attribute that to this basically lower slung chassis. It just allows really proper chassis slap off jumps. Just like with all bashers, I have had my share of frustrations. As you might recall, my very first bash at Folsom Lake, unfortunately, I blew out the stock gears. Truck instantly locked up off a jump. It was pretty much a flat landing. Unfortunately, it locked up my front and my rear diff as well. That's the first time I've ever lost my main gears and my front and rear ring gears in one shot. It really is a bummer. Traxxas continues to use basically monkey metal for their main gears in these rigs, especially given the size and the weight and the amount of power that's going through them. I honestly lost count of how many ring gears I've lost, both front and rear with this rig. For this last rung, I finally dropped in the Vitavon Spiral Cut ring and input gears, both front and rear. They're about 150 bucks on eBay. Definitely not cheap, guys. So I think the gear ratio was 1032, which is super close to 1135 that comes stock with the truck. The biggest difference is, again, they're spiral cut, hardened steel gears, perfect fitment, and ultra smooth action. As far as my power setup, I'm still running my Hobbywing 5687-1100. This thing is an absolute beast. In my opinion, it's perfect for this and the X-Max. Still running my 2530 Vitavon Mod 1.5 gears. These gears have done killer, guys. Absolutely great investment. Again, they come with a hardened steel shaft. This sucker doesn't bend like the stock metal. In my mind, this is a must-have upgrade. As far as temps go, this is definitely pushing the limit. It's okay with an average size wheel, but if you're gonna run anything bigger than backflips or the stock wheels, I'd probably go with 2535 gearing. I've definitely pushed the limit with this motor, especially running wide out in the summer. I did run the stock motor briefly. It's actually got pretty impressive power. That was paired with a Max 6. To really reach the potential of this truck, though, you do need a bigger setup. Again, I did eventually pair this with a 200 amp Leopard ESC. Of course, I mounted my ESC using the M2C Racing ESC plate. This thing fits absolutely perfect, made installation a breeze. Still running the beautiful M2C Racing 7075 motor mount. This thing's been flawless. Of course, I am using their M-Bell support. Also running the M2C Racing bell crank. This has been flawless as well. Because they use Delrin for the left bell crank arm, it's got just that perfect amount of flex for hard impacts. It's actually a benefit over having an all alloy setup. If you saw my previous videos, guys, this ended up being the Achilles heel on this truck for me. I easily went through six or seven of these plastic stock ones, absolutely pulling my hair out. I think I broke it three times in a single bash. Without question, this is definitely a must-have upgrade. The other clutch upgrade from Vitamon I got was this front mount brace. I broke several of the stockers, essentially right here in the corners. I did actually break my first Vitavon brace, but they were kind enough to send me a new one, and this thing's held up solid ever since. Of course, I am still running the three-piece Silky Smooth M2C Racing Center drive shaft setup. Still running a Hot Racing Metal Servo Horn and Drag Link. Also running Hot Racing gear covers front and rear, as well as the tie plates underneath the skids. Without question, the M2C Racing chassis brace is a must if you're going to bash hard. You'll see I went ahead and made my own custom tight X skid up at the front. Essentially just use a heat gun to shape this and then I bolted it into the existing bumper. So far the skids worked killer. Essentially just allows you to bounce over rocks, logs, etc. You'll remember I had already cracked my chassis. Essentially I think the weight of the battery just caused a split at the front. Eventually this sucker let go. Definitely going to get this replaced, but I got to say, without this center brace, there's no way in heck I could have bashed this thing the last three or four runs. And right from the beginning, guys, I've been running the M2C extended hexes. Of course, these pair with their custom axles. This is such a killer upgrade, guys. It basically allows you to fit any large-scale 24mm wheel, and it's absolutely perfect setup if you're going to run the Arma 8S wheels. You'll see from the top just how wide and stable this stance is, especially with M2C hexes. Pretty much a perfect setup if you like high-speed bashing and drifting. As far as my diff tuning, I went to silicone earplugs in the center diff quite a while ago. Think I'm running 500K up front and then 200K in the rear. 
Still running my M2C shock set up on all four corners. Think I'm running 80 weight in the front and I've got like 2000 CST in the rear. I just found I had to go really heavy to get the dampening I was looking for. Definitely has really nice dampening. I had busted at least one stock piston before going to M2C and I think I bent two or three shock shafts. Again, with this M2C setup, they've got 70, 75 rod ends. In a nutshell, do I like the Traxxas XRT? Most definitely. Having the composite chassis, it does have its durability limitations, but overall this sucker is super light for its size and absolutely rips with the right setup. Once you take care of some key upgrades and get this sucker dialed, it's an absolute blast. Definitely stoked with how smooth the Vitavon ring and pinion gears are. Without question, they'll be going in the X-Max next. Gonna leave you guys with some running video from Folsom Lake. Again, guys, just a quick reminder, the date's almost here, guys. April 6th and 7th, Saturday and Sunday at Folsom Lake. Again, this is the second annual Sacramento Valley RC Fest. Super family oriented, tons of free prizes and raffles. Planning to be there both days. Hope to see you guys out there. Vitabon gears are butter smooth, guys. Yeah, I might have blown a couple foams. <laughs> yeah, she's running killer, man. You want a race? <laughs> Nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, don't hit the little Losey Mini. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh my gosh, that thing rips, Sean.
love the steering with this M2C bell crank, guys. Tire and LBC. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. Well, I think I just blew a foam in the rear. These backflips have seen better days. I've had these for probably, I don't know, two, three years. These are the smaller ones again. Anyway, guys, had an absolute blast as always with the XRT. Stoked to finally get this thing tuned up and running right. Huge shout out to Mitch and Avery with M2C Racing. There's simply no way this sucker could take the abuse it did without the upgrades. Really happy with the smoothness of these Vitavon gears. Don't forget about the second annual RC Fest at Folsom Lake on April 6th and 7th. Definitely see you guys there both days. All right, till next time.